dear brothers and sisters, the Orthodox Church is known for its traditionalism. Okay. Most importantly, the holy tradition, which is passing all the way from the apostles. Tradition, tradere, okay, to give over. Okay. It's something that was given over from generation to generation of Christians and which is preserving us in unity with Christ through the right faith, through the right spirituality where the Holy Spirit leads and is guiding the church through the centuries. However, since we, many, many of us are weak in our spirituality, and I will explain this a bit more in the end, we understand this traditionalism very often in the wrong way. And today I want to say about seven types of fake traditionalisms that are very common within the Orthodox Church. There was a video also uh, that I made, the points of breaking into the church. Okay, maybe if you wanna see that one also, it will be helpful. So what are these fake traditionalisms? Okay, the first one, which is uh, now especially evident is this uh, adherence to nationalism or government, nation, some political agenda. Okay. And this happens with those churches which uh, became as big as a country. Okay. And I'm not uh, talking only about Russia, other smaller countries, Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece, they also have this problem that traditionalism may be understood as bond with the government. Okay, this uh, Caesarism, Caesarism, okay, Caesar. Being too close to the Caesar, okay. And this is not uh, the holy tradition, okay. Even though, yes, there were historical events which uh, contribute to this okay, closer bond, but it by no means uh, is inherent in the church faith itself. So we have to be free of anything, any nationalistic or any um, okay, this political government agenda thing, which will try to use us for its own purpose, okay. And many people are uh, misled by this, and we know uh, what it all leads to, okay, that uh, people who uh, go to church um, go to war with each other, okay. So uh, the world has changed from what it was 1,500 years ago, but some of the mindsets uh, are still there, okay. so. Let us be aware of this uh, fake traditionalism. The Lord uh, told that uh, to apostles John and Jacob, when they wanted to destroy that uh, Samaritan village with fire, he said, you don't know what spirit you are of. The spirit of gospel is the spirit of love. And uh, this political traditionalism is uh, perverting the very essence of the gospel. So let us be uh, aware of this and not become victim of this. The second uh, tradition, uh, fake traditionalism is the so-called uh, old believers, old right, old right traditionalism. Okay, what's wrong about uh, that kind of traditionalism? It's a big story what it all right is. There is one in Russia, there is one in um, uh, Greece, in other countries, the old right has a spirit of um, you can kill someone for just one letter. Okay, if you don't go by these letters, you go to hell. Okay, so um, the right, okay, how you do, how you move, what you say, it all has to fit some magical formula to for it to work. 
and if it doesn't you go to hell you're a heretic you okay it doesn't work it's all fake okay so this uh, obsession about some uh, formal uh, things okay and uh, hatred to anyone who is outside of this small circle be it uh, the church the patriarchal church in russia for example of course is the church of antichrist and the government is antichrist and you find antichrist under every bush okay he's hidden somewhere and it's also gloomy so we live uh, in this uh, satanic world okay everywhere is uh, satan everybody is uh, uh, now they say uh, you're chipped okay everybody is chipped if you don't agree with them you're chipped okay that kind of spirit i think you got it so it's all kinds of phobias and uh, hatred uh, and uh, this paranoia okay so um, uh, uh, let us be aware of this thing it's uh, present not only only in the old believers okay it's present in the church in the orthodox church itself in the canonical church so um, beware of it the third one is um, quite common uh, among missionaries it's somewhat similar but different okay uh, i would call it legalism legalism you know this um, fitting the canons you have to go by the canons in every small detail if you depart from it a little bit okay you go to hell okay and uh, you're a heretic you're a sect you're whatever okay so for example there are canons that uh, forbid you from uh, going to bath to this public bath together with a jew so for example in your fitness club if there is a jew and you go with him to the same shower room okay you're doomed okay you you you, you uh, violate the canon you go to hell so th this is just an example okay i think you may get the uh, meaning so um, usually it's a very literal understanding of the bible okay do you believe that uh, the world was created in six days 24 hour periods six 24 hour periods this is how they will put their question yes or no yes or no no you say maybe it's something else you're a heretic okay you go to hell so okay this kind of spirit and quite many missionaries are they have a great zeal they, they go and preach uh, this thing and um, this uh, is also very far away from the gospel very far away you call them brave men uh, i call them um, psychologically imbalanced okay to say the least uh, and it's also of course the pharisee uh, spirit pharisee spirit uh, another a fourth type of um, fake traditionalism is um, i would call it um, I would call it, you know, to put it simple, you hate LGBT, okay? You hate LGBT and everything that's related with these uh, liberal uh, values, okay? And this becomes the, the main uh, content of your life. You are orthodox because you hate all those things. So you cannot say anything else about your faith, but that you are against these uh, faggots, okay? Uh, so um, <clears throat> this is um, something that is also quite common. I don't say we approve those things. We don't, by no means, okay? It's a mortal sin. But we're not obsessed about um, always screaming just about those things, okay? Uh, there is um, there was a movement in russia before revolution it's called uh, black hundred uh, black hundred it was a very okay low um, class people uh, peasants uh, okay or like people from the uh, very low um, social strata and uh, they were uh, radically uh, protecting the orthodoxy 
So uh, most of those Jewish pogroms, and uh, they were done by people associated, affiliated with this uh, Black Hundred. In those days, it was not as radical as now. So in those days, uh, some saints, for example, Saint John of Kronstadt, they were even blessing uh, these, these movements. But nowadays, this became um, like a paramilitary group uh, of uh, fanatics. Uh, who, for example, there is a very famous one, it's called um, Death or Orthodoxy. Okay, and they wear these black uh, t-shirts, like satanistic t-shirts with uh, skulls and, and, and they all like really hostile. They go on these parades and uh, they try to scare you, to say, you, if you touch orthodoxy, you're gonna die. Okay, so this is also transmitting some kind of spirit which is far, far away from the gospel. Okay, uh, so I think you also got the idea. Um, another type of fake traditionalism is the, I would call it like a souvenir, uh, like a hochloma or matryoshka, okay? It's all about this uh, aesthetic feeling about, okay, that those churches, they have those cupolas, uh, they are so nice, okay, uh, uh, we dress, okay, they, they, they like all kinds of uh, dressing, okay, now we dress, we go on a um, procession uh, of the cross, okay, make a lot of pictures, okay, this is, okay, it looks so nice, so beautiful, this is orthodoxy. Okay, so this is like a cosplay, you know, this is like so fake, this is uh, so superficial, but for some people this is orthodoxy, believe it or not. So this uh, is, um, okay, uh, some degeneration, okay, de de degenerate uh, form of uh, religion, okay, it's also fetishism, you can call it, okay. Uh, because those pagans, they love all kinds of uh, uh, different uh, masquerades and stuff like that. So, um, uh, please beware of this thing also. This is not true orthodoxy, okay? Another, uh, the sixth fake traditionalism is uh, some kind of obsession about miracles. Miracles or some uh, elders who will uh, like fortune tellers, okay, they will tell you something uh, like oracles, you know, they will tell you something from God, okay, so you go uh, somewhere far away in Siberia in the lineup, uh, you see an elder and he told you two words, okay, and, and this is uh, this is all your faith, okay, it's, in, it's all obsessed about those elders and uh, miracles, and okay, you collect all kinds of miracles. Oh, you know, there something happened, and here something happened, and this and that, and you are like excited about all these things. So you you don't really get what the faith is. Who is Christ? You never even open the gospel, maybe. So this is another thing, and we have uh, tons of these miracles coming from those uh, Byzantine uh, legendary, uh, like fairy tale style uh, writings. Um, that we inherit from the Middle Ages, okay, and people are reading them and they are getting excited about it, but it's, it's uh, more of a folk tales, okay, it's, uh, um, it should not be taken uh, so literally, okay, as an icon, okay, it's not, an icon is not a photograph, so you should not uh, uh, say, like, on an icon we have a mother of God with three hands, it doesn't mean that she had three hands, okay? So um, this is another topic, I don't want to go into it, but um, please be aware of this kind of fake traditionalism. It's like a fantasy, fairy tale, uh, imaginary, uh, imaginary religion, uh, uh, okay, some uh, metaverse, okay, metaverse for orthodox. Um, and the seventh, the seventh um, is also very common, it's when you uh, believe that the orthodox faith is all about dogma, okay? The right theology, okay? And all f f 
false dogmas, they make people non-orthodox, heretics. Uh, so you just need to know these dogmas, or at least you need to say, I, I approve these dogmas. Many people don't even know them, okay? But these are the dogmas. I, I, I accept this orthodox. So it's all about me accepting those, and that's why I'm saved, I'm special, I'm Christian, hallelujah. Okay? And nothing else, and I don't need to do much else. I just need to adhere to these dogmas, and this will make me saved. So this is another very rationalistic uh, and very uh, superficial also understanding. Uh, demons, they also know all the dogmas, okay? But they, they uh, don't love God and they are not saved. So uh, just knowing dogmas is not enough. Okay? It's, it's, uh, it's very good, it's important, yes, but this is not enough. This is not something to be boasting about. Okay, we preserve these dogmas, yes, uh, but there is also spiritual teaching. Uh, there is this practice, uh, spiritual practice, and this is, now I'm coming to a conclusion. I want to point out uh, something I feel all these people who fall into these traps are lacking. Okay, all of them would be lacking understanding of the cross. Take up thy cross and follow me go this narrow path to salvation humble yourself repent your sins so these uh, people they don't really know what this is they don't really take up their cross and for them something else some other uh, fetish yes it's uh, traditional it's it seems traditional it's not liberal but it becomes um, some other idol, okay? And they are slipping into some fake spirituality and uh, uh, proudness, and um, usually they will be locked in this worldview, okay? And they will be led by uh, the so-called spiritual leaders who are also blind in some of those delusions. So let us be aware. Of course, there are even more. I've uh, mentioned seven, but there are many more fake uh, ways to understand traditional conservative within the church. May the Lord keep us away from all these traps, give us the wisdom, uh, keep us faithful, keep us loyal to Christ, send down His Holy Spirit upon us help us on this narrow path to salvation, to become good witnesses of His love, of uh, humbleness, humility, compassion to others, and to bring the Word of Gospel, the love of the Gospel, to everyone around us. I mean, God bless brothers and sisters.